Spencer was doing that, man, and, uh, and, and he had a homeboy of mine, um, a homeboy, Duro, brown eye from Kingwins. I, mean, I say homeboy, but I'm, you know, I'm not a homie no more. I'm, you know, I'm not, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I, I disclaim all that. I'm not part of any of that no more. I'm just me now, you know? So when I say homie, it's just, that's past tense, right? But I had a friend, my homie, um, um, uh, brown eye, Rich, uh, Art Hernandez from Penguins. This is my, one of my best friends in the whole world for a long time, you know? And towards the end, he, he, rest in peace, he's passed on too, right? But uh, one day I'm there and I see him in the hallway. And I, I'm working in a thing, and he's all pissed off. I know it. I said, what the hell is wrong, dude? He goes, I bought a monster, man. He got my money, you know, man. He goes, and I guess he held out. Doodle was no, you know, you don't mess with Doodle. I mean, you know, you didn't, nobody on him mess with Doodle. Doodle was well respected to the day he died, you know what I mean? You know, and, and you know, and I loved him, you know. And, uh, you know, you didn't mess with Doodle, you know what I mean? He was no flash, but, you know, like I said, that homie, the monster didn't care who he was doing. He didn't give a you know, regular or whatever. He just took your money, right? And he was, uh, Duro was saying that he held out. He didn't give it to him. He didn't want to give it to him for a whole day. Until finally homeboy said, look, you either give me the money or you're going to get f***ed up. So the homies, like some homies surrounded the bed where he was at and said, look, bro, just give him $20. We don't want to beat you up. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, he's doing that thing like you're, you know, he's real mad. And so Duro gave him that money, you know. And, uh, and uh, you know, I talk about that because, you know, he did that to a lot of guys. And a couple of guys got beat up behind that, you know. And, uh, but anyways, um, one stroke, <clears throat> back in those days, there was a couple of torpedoes back in the days when I was growing up. It was, uh, Richard Savala, Jaime Duran, and Matt from Orange, where we see. And Matt's still around. Jaime says why, and, uh, and Richard's been dead. Richard got made over the years, but we knew Richard was. All those three guys were, 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 were headed to get made at the time. We all thought they'd be brothers at the time, but, you know. And, uh, and uh, you know, Matt's been off and on, yes, no, yes, no, we don't know, but I, I grew up with these guys. Anyways, Richard... And this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. I bring these up because Richard knew Morsel pretty good, right? They were good friends, okay? But Richard Savala was one of Sana's boys right there, right? Now, Richard Savala, that's another carnal. He was a carnal. He got made in the 80s, right? Now, I'll tell you a story about him. It's going to be not going to be a long one, but... Well, I guess it will be. Excuse me. Richard Savala. I've known Richard Savala uh, uh, well, since I was a kid. And how my first my first interaction with Richard was one day, I must have been like 10 years old, 9 years old, because we hadn't moved to Anaheim yet. Because I, I, I moved from La Harbor to Anaheim when I was 9 years old. So I was like 9 years old. It was in 71 we moved over there. So I was there. And you know, so I had to be, it was like nine years old. And so they get a knock on the door. And my dad's like, Damn, I see a look in his eyes, right? I know that look. And my dad was a fool. And he tells me, well, look, when I tell you to open the door, just open it and move out of the way, get out of the way. So he grabs a big old pad, right? And I guess he had burned Richard. Now, Richard Savala, if anybody knew him, was a beast. This guy was a yoked up beast, man. You know, because like, once again, we had the weight piles back in the days, right? But he was always a big dude, you know? And, 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 uh, you know, I don't really know how, how old he was at the time, but he was older, you know what I mean? And so, you know, I was a kid, so, so my mom opens the door, right, and she opens it, and my, as soon as he opens it, Richard's right there, and my dad goes, swings at the back through the screen, and hits Richard on the head, bang, and, you know, kind of Richard went down, next thing you know, they're, 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 they're scuffling, and it goes to the, to the, you know, to the, to like the garage port right there, right, my mom shuts the door and locks it, she goes, go in the room, go in the room, she's like, no, 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 I want to see my dad, I want to see my dad, right? And so, and so, you know, I, I, like 10 minutes go by, it seemed like a 20 seconds, some minutes go by, and, and here comes my dad, back in the house, right, and he's already got himself a shiner, right, and I don't know what, for so me, I don't know, he had these, like, because he was, like, kind of like a, you know, after the little cholo years, they go through the thing, they go through the, the cholo years, and the hippie days came and all that, but he had, he, he had these shoes that were, like, around, these heels, they were, like, they were, like, slip on, they were some crazy shoes, but they were, like, the, the heels were like two inches thick or three inches thick. They were like some skimpy kind of shoes, right? So, you know, he's out there fighting in those shoes. Now, but my dad was a little, you know, he was he was a short little guy, and he wasn't as big as Richard. He gave him his money's worth, but he ended up with a shiner. So he comes in, he's laughing, he's smiling. He goes, yeah, you know what, it's all straightened out. Don't worry about it. It's all good. And, uh, you know, I'm going, that son of a gun. He goes, that son of a gun. I don't want him around here. You know, my mom blows or whatever how it was. And, uh, you know, she's telling him off, and he goes, no, nah, you know, he's, it's okay, you know, I squashed him, we took care of him, whatever the case was, right, I'm in the room. So they ended up fighting, and then they got squashed. So I tell a story about that, because I always laugh at Richard about it, my dad, 
because that's that was my first introduction to Richard, right? Richard goes, you were there? I go, yeah, I was right there in the door when he hit you with the bat. He goes, yeah, man, that's how he caught me sniffing, you know? And so anyway, so so Richard, a lot of over the years, okay, he's doing his thing torpedo and right there, and he's, you know, I always hear about Richard. So we, we're, you know, we're, you know, you know, we're, it's all about intimidation. When you're in the mob, you know, it, it's about intimidation. You know, just just the just the knowledge and the thing that you're part of. My, you intimidate, and people just, you know, that alone is going to get you what you need to get with with a lot of people, right? So, you know, he intimidated a lot of people, right? So uh, now we're fast forward some years, and uh, I end up in uh, I end up in uh, in uh, New Folsom, and I I parole from San Quentin. And I, I got a violation. I did the violation. And I ended up in New Folsom. I'm in New Folsom. And now, we just, New Folsom was just opening up, right? Old Folsom was still the level four. Because now, back in the days, back in the days, in the, in the, you know, when all this, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s, whatever, San Quentin, Valley, there was only four level fours up until around 87. And that was San Quentin, Old Folsom, Tracy, and Soledad. Those were the only level fours there were, and those were the shoes you went to and all. Those were level fours, okay? And then Tehachapi got built, right? That was Tehachapi Max at the time. Like, ooh, Tehachapi Max, you know? So, uh, you know, that was, it was there. So, so New Folsom was just getting built. Well, it was built already, right? It was like about 87, I'd say, maybe, yeah. So, so when I drive up, uh, a B, B facility was already established. I was already, you know, the homie's yard and all that. Um, um, a facility was uh, the, the, the half of the shoe or, and half P, it was PC, and then, and then, no, no. A facility was, was half like a shoe, half of the hole, and then half of the four buildings were, were regular uh, GP, right? That's where we were at, okay? And CR was all, was all PC, okay? And that was the word we used at the time, PC. There was no, I never heard the term SMY until five, six years ago. So it was PC, right? Okay, now back then, there was only a couple of uh, uh, SMY yards. White, the White Elephant was one of them, Chino East. got to remember this. There wasn't a lot of SMY people then. I mean, there was a lot, but it was, there, wasn't, there wasn't so many of them. You only had a couple of SMY yards, and there was really no designated SMY yards. And that, I always know growing up was, was the White Elephant. We used to call it the White Elephant. That's Chino East. That ended up being the PC yard, you know, for a long time, right, up until, you know, whatever, okay? And, uh, and, uh, so, so I ended up in New Folsom and I, and the, and the first one I see in the tele- This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. I see Jaime Duran, right? Okay. Now, now, you gotta remember, I'm up and coming, I'm, I'm up and coming in the race. I'm doing my thing. I'm working with homeboys. I'm doing my thing. And, and Jaime's, you know, been doing his thing, right? But Jaime always thought he was guy in a bag of chips. Now, Jaime was pretty bad with his fists and all that, but, you know, he always had this little, this little, this little thing about him. Like he, he, he thought he was all that, right? You know, overconfident, I'd say, right? And uh, and uh, so so he's there and he's serving challenge. All right, that's all right, local, whatever. And we were talking. I said, all right, I need some stuff. And he looks at me like, you know, like, what do you mean? You know, what I mean, you know, I, you know, that's the way he was. So I said, no, right, homie, I got you, right? Where other where other homies looked out for me, I, I got taken care of, right? And so, anyways, I I didn't really care for him too much. I really didn't like him. I was intimidated by him because, like I said, he grew up. I grew up with him being one of the main torpedoes. But by now, I was already full fledged doing my thing, and so. You know, I, I, you know, I, I, I'll go head up with him any time. I'll go up at any time. I'm out of fight. You know, took, took him on. Out of, who knows? You know what I mean? It only takes one punch. Anyway, so, or I could, so, so I don't know this. I don't know this, but, but he has already gotten in trouble. He was already in trouble. They had left him in the yard over there in Ophos, and they doing some things, and he left. And he didn't know it, but he was in trouble. Nobody knew it, right? Because they had, they were clean. They cleared out Ophos, and and they were, and all the and Everybody was in New Ophos now, right? So uh, a lot of these got for that, for, for getting the yard in Old Folsom and not doing the right thing, so, but back then it took a little bit, you could get a check wound or whatever, right, and it still come out, you know, and be okay if you were a straight dude, you know, so uh, Richard Savala is there, Richard, now Richard already got made, we heard that Richard was made, but it was like, yeah, no, yeah, no, but he was made, we finally got confirmation, and yeah, he was made, right, all right, so everybody says he's made, okay, there, and uh, we're fighting for the yards, and I think I tell you something, I think we're fighting for these yards, and it's, there's a lot of northerners and southerners, and we're and we're, and we're taking them for the yards, but we're all we're, we're all in the same yards, right? And uh, so you know you got to walk with a couple guys. If you walk by yourself, you're going to get hit. And the same thing with them. So you walk with two or three guys, you were left alone, right? So you know you had to have point on the weight pile and all that. They had the little spot for the weights. We had ours, whatever. It was pretty. It was pretty, uh, you know, intense right there, right? So uh, 
you know, we're walking around with our straps or whatever. And so anyways, we got your Savalas made, right? So then all of a sudden, one day, <laughs> one day, I'm watching, the, you know, we hear something happen with Richard. We don't know. He's in the hole, right? So, so you know, cause we, got, we got our own thing going on. And we're watching TV, and we're looking at the, 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 the institutional channel, and I see this big old Mexican come in the ring, and I see this big old black dude come in the ring. This is heavyweight, right? They were showing the boxing right there. They had a ring over there in, uh, in New Folsom. And uh, the guys from YA used to go there and box the guys in New Folsom now, right? Okay. And, you know, those kids from YA were p- pretty bad, right? Anyway, so, so I said, that Richard? And it was Richard Savala fighting this black dude, right? And he's, Richard could fight, but this black dude gave, uh, he gave him all he could handle, right? And, you know, in some ways he won, some ways he didn't, but at the end he was raising his fist and all that. I'm like, God damn, Richard, right? And we're looking, and I kind of look, and I go, man, are those cars? Well, what happened with Richard Savala? Richard Savala, the story was, now I look, and that's Sea Yard. He was on Sea Yard. He had, he was made not even five or six months. And the story was, he just disappeared one day, and all of a sudden, they found like five or six, seven funerals, right? And it was Richard. You had 60 seconds yeah, remaining. Richard, Richard. Whatever, man. He lasted five, six, seven months. I don't know exactly how long, but it was no time at all, right? And then I got word that he said he wasn't, but he was. He was starting out, right? And yeah, he gave up all these fierros. But I looked, and he, when I looked at that boxing match, I looked at it again when it came out again, and he had all these scars. He had some functions. They, 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 they got him pretty good. They got him pretty good. Uh, you know. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. You know, that's what we hear about Richard, right? Okay, now, now at the same time, at the same time, around the yards, we're, we're, we're fighting for the yards, right? So we're there like around two months, and we're barely establishing a yard, that little four buildings right there, right? Well, little man from uh, from uh, Whittier is is there, right? Now, little, little man from Whittier, that was one of the main ones back in the days, right? He was still active, you know, still doing his thing. He was still an active senor, right? He had, he had after the, he, he's been... He's been as a while or non-active, whatever. They got he got in trouble around in the early '90s, right? You know, and like I said, I get the years mixed up a little bit. But you know, at the time, the old man was doing his thing right there. He was in the hall, so he shoots where they are, whatever we do. We try to get him claw. We send a couple, we send a guy in there to get him claw, and he the guy can't get it because it didn't work out, right? So you know, nothing really happened there, right? So then uh, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, they tell us, look, all you guys are packing up. You guys are going to see our and see yards coming over here, and we're like, what the hell? Okay, and we're like, all right, whatever. So now they're making A yard, the piece S and Y yard, and they're making C, C yard, the regular uh, GP yard. Now, B yard's already established, okay? So we're telling homies, like, you know what, man, we just got to get over to B yard. All these fighting for these yards, this is this is too much, you know? But we're like, ah, whatever, let the, let the chips fall where they may, right? So at the time, I'm running around with uh, Ramiro uh, Smiley from, from uh, Hazard, and and uh, that's not the smiley, from the Carnot smiley. It's another smiley, right? And a good friend of mine, you know. I don't know how you feel about things now, but he's my friend. He's my friend, you know. And he was my Shelly at the time. So they move us all over to C facility. So now we're in C facility, but you got to remember, A facility only has four buildings. C facility's got eight buildings. So you know there's some stragglers. So we get there. We you know we get there. We're like all right, and we drive up and. You know, I ended up being with Tomboy again, right in the same, in the same uh, building right there, right? And so we're right there, and, uh, and uh, now you got some S and Y guys running around trying to hide, you know, be, you know, under, you know, under the sheets right there amongst us, and we don't know what's going on. So this porter comes up, and he's, all right, where are you guys from? Whatever. We tell him, yeah, this and the other. We tell him, we tell him some things, and some things are going on. We tell him, look, we want to do this, and we're going to do this, whatever, right? Well, we don't know it, but this such. You know, this dude right here is, is one of them guys that's scary. He's kind of scary. I forget his name, man. Allah or something. Oh, excuse my language again. And, uh, and and he's running around. He's one of them scary dudes, right? Well, when we go to the yard, you know, we go to the yard, he's, he, some other dude says, hey, Ray, you know what? You guys got to be careful. That guy right there, you know, we've been we've been having our eye on him, whatever, you know, and, and, and uh, I think he's, you know, you know, PC right here. We're trying to look out and see for sure what's going on. We're running a check on him right now, but he went and told these guys already what you were doing, and, and then Mark Daniels already got word of it, you know what I mean, that, that you're trying to set up shop right here, right? Because, you know, we were right away trying to get the and do our things and find out what's going on with the weight pile, and we were going to set up shop, you know, against Mark Daniels, just, just for security reasons, you know what I mean? Just take care of our business, right? 
And uh, so, anyways, with that day, we ended up getting our, on the second yard, we ended up getting our steel and our fierros out there, right? And, uh, you know, but we were real careful because this guy kind of knew our, our, our beginning plan, right? So so then I asked him about Bo- Bully Pete. Now, I tell this in my, in my podcast, Bully Pete was from Colton. Now, Bully Pete was a big old dude and all that, and he was a bully, right? He was down, but he had gotten in trouble behind Manuel Midnight from La Jolla. Now, Midnight was the one that was supposed to be a carnage from Orange County and whatever, but uh, um, Pete had done some things for Midnight, and Sana and them didn't like it, and so that's how Pete's trouble started. That's how, when in, and we were in, uh, in, uh, we were in Chino East at the time. That wasn't the PC no more. It wasn't the White Allison. It wasn't the SNY no more. We were coming from the hole. Me and Reggie McGonia made uh, 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 Bully P lock it up. And that's how they did it back then. I don't know why. The home we shot word into us. I'll get a side shot. I'm going to go to this guy named David Hernandez from Fullerton. It says word. He says, look, man, the big Bully P is in there. You're going to lock it up and get off the yard. Or, or, or you know, you guys take care of it. Just pounce him right there. And we're like, huh? All right. So we got Bully Pete, and we told him, look, bro, you got to leave. You got to leave, lock it up, or we're going to come back right now. We're going to, you know what I mean, it's on, right? Be ready. And, and he ended up locking up. You know, that, that's, that's strange. That's the way they did it back then. You know, a couple people, that's the way I've seen it done a couple of times, right? So anyway, he's gone. So now fast forward to his time over there. So, that's, uh, you know, I, I find out he's there, right? Okay, and that's a story for another time. Well, then Little Man, yeah. So I said the word to Little Man, the rest way I can. And I never get work back, so I don't know if the wheelies are getting there or this, that, and the other. Well, and I'll tell you, I'll get to this story again later because there was a guy named um, uh, Rudy the Bully. He drives up to the shower and we're on it. And I thought, we're barely a stallion or something. Now, Bully, uh, Rudy the Bully from Santa Monica, he's coming out saying he's a carnal. So we're like, okay, we go to the, the, the shim word is, hey, there's a carnal, there's a carnal out there on the yard. He's going to be out there and he needs a hot pot, this, that, and the other, right? So. I give up my hot pot. We give up our hot pot. We said, we'll give one of our hot pots. So we take it out there. All right. He's sitting with this dude from Weedman. I said, I don't know who this dude is. This dude from Weedman is a big old weenie, big old fat there. Excuse my language. You know, just sitting on the table like he's going to do to protect this guy. He wouldn't have lasted but a few seconds. He had been winded. He had got dusted. You know, we're all top shape, you know, us youngsters, and we're doing our thing, you know. And we're shooting stars. We want to do things, you know. And so, but we're respecting Bo- uh, Rudy's thing, right? So he's sitting there. And, and he's all like, like sitting there, like I kind of knew something was off, because he's sitting there like a don on a table by himself, and, and he had this guy there with them, and he just had this thing, like ah, he wasn't speaking right the, the language, you know, I mean, he wasn't giving us no order or no edits or saying, hey, well, we're going to do this and that, and we're waiting for him to tell us how we're going to do this because we're still fighting for this damn for the yard, you know. So I tell, well, this is what's going on. This guy over here in this building, this guy here is a continue. And he goes, yeah, you know what, I'll just say that for right now. We'll do this later. We had to bring up stuff, what we're doing. You know? This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. He goes, he goes because I want to stay on the yard. If things happen, they're going to roll me up and this and the other. And, you know, and I'm thinking, well, excuse me, I'm thinking, well, if they know you're gone, now you're gone. Because those things, they rolled you up. You know, you were, you were gone, right? And we're like, ah, no, nah, that just, you know, it was weird, right? So anyways, it goes on. In the opinion, he wasn't that car not. And he was a good dude. Maybe he was going to be, he never became one, I don't think. I never heard his name. And uh, and uh, so I shoot word again to Little Man. And Little Man, we don't get no word from him, right? Okay. And then uh, I had a friend at the time who was Playboy from uh, King Cobra. He was my friend, but, you know, he's, you know, I don't think he cares for me too much now. But anyways, he was on the B facility. And, uh, you know, I shoot word over there to him to see if I can find out what's going on. And I never got word back, you know. And, uh, and uh, uh, you know, so so whatever, man. So so we're there, and then Bully Rudy's gone with my hot pot and some other stuff, like around uh, five or six days later, excuse my language again. And so uh, we're there, and then so now I'll talk about these stories there. So now we'll fast forward, right? So I'll go back to Richard Savala, you know. Um, uh, and, and and so uh, I'm with I'm in I'm in uh, I'm in the shoe I'm in Pelican Bay shoe and I'm there and I introduce myself with some kids and I tell them hey whatever it is this one dude I forget his name who he was I don't know if he was from Orange County I think he was whatever right and he tells me hey Ray you know uh, Richard Savala and I go yeah I know Richard Savala he goes yeah he goes you know what I'm gonna tell you man I'm gonna run this by you man he goes and I hope I ain't no you know whatever what happened was was this kid just was so it was a coincidence that they were on a level one. You know, eventually Richard had made it down to a level one, a minimum yard, and this kid had came from a from a level one, right? He was a big kid, and he came from a level one, and he had a shoe, he had a determined shoe, for, and, and it was a, it was an in-house or whatever, right? And what happened was, and I'm telling you firsthand, because I was with this kid right there, he told me about it, 
You know, he says, Ray, did, you know, Richard, they were playing baseball, doing things, and Richard just got on his face, you know, just was being a bully, whatever, and, you know, and, and, you know, really disrespected this guy. And then, you know, just, you know, put his guard down, whatever, and this kid said, Ray, I didn't know what to do. And he, so this kid came up behind him with a baseball bat and domed him, almost took his head off. Almost his head, I think it's, I heard his head. Or whatever, and he killed Richard. This guy killed Richard Savala on a level one yard. That's how Richard died, man. You know, rest in peace. Because he has a son, and uh, he's, I, I know him, so I don't want to be too harsh on this right here. But, yeah, that's how Richard Savala died. I mean, so, you know, it's crazy. When you're in that life, you know, that's those are the things that happen to you. You know, things go full circle. And, 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 and you know, you're not going to live a long time, you know. Uh, so, you know, once again, I'm saying, you know, this is not to, to talk bed down and drop people or, or boost people or anything like that. These are just stories that I know through these carnales over the year, and this one in particular. And, and that's how he, how he, you know, how he passed out, and then Monster passed out, and then Sporty. You know, I heard Sporty has gone crazy. Sporty somewhere's 5150 now, man. He just he's all crazy. He said his hair grow all crazy. He never had he had hair. He's going bald, you know. And that's just the, the, the demise of these guys, you know, and, and, and certain people. And, and, you know, because the shoes, I see this now, the shoes were the thing that sort of preserved us, that saved us all. That preserved us. That made us able to stay sharp and fresh because you were there and you were limited and you're doing your thing. And now that everybody's on these main line, these guys are all on the main line, it's running ragged, man. It's going to go crazy. And, you know, and the guys that don't use, that are disciplined enough that don't use it, hey, they're the ones that are going to thrive in this world and do their thing. But the people that are using it, they're cocktails and don't know how to do it, you know, they're going to end up, you know, and I'm talking about carnales and guys that are just kicked up, you know what I mean? Because you don't have to be a carnal now to have a lot of juice. You can be kicked up and, 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 and take care of things, you know, for, for years, you know. You know, we, we did our things over there, and, you know, in Orange County. And, uh, you know, I'll talk about that another another time. I'll talk about uh, Ricky Chavez, you know. Um, I've got a little about Ricky as my friend growing up. I knew him growing up throughout the years, and he was a good guy, man. One of the best guys you'll ever meet in the world. You know, and, and, and uh, you know, he he's no longer with us, but I'll tell that story later, you know. But in the meantime, uh, you know, um, you know, that's just uh, that's the way things are here. I want once again, I want to say, I want to give a shout out, you know, to my friends, which I said, which was Larry Gooden from Santana, you know, God bless him, man. He's always been there for us now. He, he, he's been serving the Lord, doing his thing. I, I want to say hi to Paul Morales, Stumper from La Habra, you know, and they've you know, been my friends, uh, Mark Valencia from La Harbra, um, my homeboy, my, my brother, um, Ramiro Sandoval, he's from, you know, my my old neighborhood, you know, he lives in Texas, you know, good guy, man, he's always looked out for me, and my homegirl, Sylvia, a sad girl, you know, she's, she's been kind enough to uh, to write to me and, 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 you know, just show some kindness towards me, and that goes a long ways, you know, and, uh, you know, there's some other people I, I want to say hi to in the, in the future.